Well, true Halloween fans will know that this season calls for all things to be a little bit spooky and a whole lot of mystery, including the books that you're picking up. This morning, we are joined with young adult mystery author Maureen Johnson, who is popularly right. known for her truly devious series that tells the story of a teenage detective, Stevie Bell. Maureen, thank you so much for joining us this Saturday. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So you write young adult mysteries. How did you uh, start writing for, for young adults? Well, honestly, it was a challenge that someone gave to me. Um, I, as a teenager, I was never allowed to do anything. So I, someone said to me, have you ever tried writing for teenagers? And I said, well, what? I, I never did anything as a teenager. I always tried to get out. And I started from there because a lot of being a young person is trying to make your way and get out and get out from under the people you see as, you know, keeping you down, your parents, your school. Uh, it's a great place to start, honestly. Um, and I find that the young adult audience, and I've been writing for young adult for a long time now, this is maybe my 16th book or so, is some of the most flexible, uh, eager to read, most intelligent readers out there who will read across genres. It's a great place to be. Yeah, for sure. I just recently picked up reading this year. So it's been fun to see all the different types of genre and writing that mm -hmm. people uh, do with their stories and stuff. So Stevie Bell, let's dive a little deeper into her. She's your leading teenage detective in your uh, trilogy. So where are we going to see her next uh, go at the end of your last book, The Book in the Woods? It sounded like maybe England. Yes. So Stevie Bell is my detective. I've always been a fan of detective mysteries. She begins in Vermont in a series called Truly Devious. She goes to a camp in the woods, in the Bacchus of the Woods, and she is going to England for Nine Liars. And it's a classic English country house murder mystery. Mm. Uh, it's absolutely, it's, a, it's the book. I, I was obsessed with reading English mysteries as a kid and, and classic mysteries and haunt and the country house, this the closed cast of subjects and a fair shot at solving the case yourself. So there's you if you read this, it is a puzzle mystery where you can figure it out yourself. The clues are there. Yeah. And so why mysteries um, for you? I mean, you mentioned that you were given this task to try writing, um, but why mysteries is the path that you took? Just so obsessive. The first book I ever read was a child's version of The Hound of the Baskervilles when I was about four. And I was an obsessive mystery reader as a kid. I was that kid that, you know, instead of playing kickball, I would sit on the side and try to read and the ball would bounce off my head. You know, all writers are generally those, those kids. And I was obsessed with mysteries. I read two Agatha Christie's a day. I wanted to be a detective. I wanted to open up a detective, <laughs> you know, agency on my front lawn. I wanted to be that person. And I finally, a couple of years ago, said, why don't you try to do what you love so much and think about all the time? Um, because I'd written so many things that weren't mysteries, because sometimes I think it's hard to do the thing you love the most because you're afraid of it, mm -hmm. because you're afraid of getting it wrong. And so I've thrown my whole heart and soul into being a mystery. And I love being a mystery creator, and I love it. I, I mean, if you really love a thing, I, it comes through, hopefully. Yeah. Well, and you're able to explore this career path that you really wanted to do through your books. So that's awesome. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, eventually I will open up my detective agency on my front lawn. And then if you have any cases that, that any of you need, come, just, just come and find me. And you'll, you'll search them out for us. <laughs> I'll do my very best. Awesome. Maureen, so inclusivity plays a large role in your books, but in a very subtle way. Uh, was creating inclusive storytelling deliberate for you? Well, deliberate in the sense that it, it's the most natural and normal thing to do. It would be very weird not to have your books reflect the, the world, you know, the people in the world. So it's not, there's no, whenever the idea is posed that there's some special effort required to be quote unquote diverse, you know, it's, it's not diversity is, is natural. It's what's, it's what's right and normal. And uh, kids also kids know that. So if you if you're not aware of that, you're there. Young adult readers are very very aware. Very you can't honestly. One of the hard things you learn quickest is that you can't fool a teenager. <laughs> That's for sure, Maureen. Uh, thank you so much. We cannot wait to read your next book and hopefully hear about your uh, detective business that you maybe plan on opening. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> All right. If you guys want to read Maureen's books, you can head over to your local bookstores. 
or Amazon or the library. We'll be back right after this break.